Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. Hey, man, what's going on? Hey, another day, another nickel. Mm. This man continues to get paid more than me. Um, uh, you know, when you're in high demand. Yeah. And <laughs> Not. You mentioned it uh, before we got on, but unlike last week, our uh, problem-filled podcast should go rather smoothly this week because there's no rain out there. <laughs> On the no, uh, flip side of that, though, I'm going to go run after the show, and it's hot. It is. I did my three miles this morning hey, before it got hot. I, I was at work early this morning, so I had no, no choice. But it's all good. How far... How far do you live from the house? You could just run to work. Oh, no. No, I'm no. about 30 minutes from work. So, hey, you yeah. got this. What, what's that? About a two and a half hour run? Maybe. No, that's longer than that. Shoot. How many miles is it? 37 miles. Mm, yes, you could probably do it in about eight hours. <laughs> By the time you get there, it'll be time to go home. I know. I'm going to sleep here tonight because. That'll save time. I can just wake up and clock in. So, like, let's see. So, Susan, when she does her marathons, that's what, 26.2? It's 26 point something. I forget what the actual length is because I know a half is 13.1. So, I imagine, yeah, 26. So, I. I'm thinking that she she did hers like in between five and six hours. Mm -hmm. So, you know, add another like eight hours. I think you probably make it happen. Yeah. And by the way, hats off to her. Congratulations, because I have never forayed into the uh, marathon uh, spectrum yet. So she's done three three or four of them two I, I of the will, big six she's I been two of the big it. six i will do it one day but i don't know when and i don't i can't guarantee there'll be another one i'm just doing it to say i did it um but i've done a couple half marathons and i do all kinds of 10ks and 5ks well i would say if you've done a couple half marathons you could knock out a marathon yeah uh a little bit more the than thing double that time I say the thing that amazes me most about you runners, because I'm a I'm a walker, uh, but is the fact that like when Susie was training for her marathon, she'd be like, "All right, I'm gonna go do 15 miles." I'm like, "What? You just you just gonna go run 15 miles? Okay. What? I'm gonna go cut the grass. You know? <laughs> I mean, it was just that nonchalant. I'm like, wow." So, yeah, I mean, it, 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 we've got the number in our head and we just like time to get out there and do it. And the, you know, when you, it, when you, when you don't actively walk or run a mile seems like so long, it's really not, No, you know, once you're out there, you know, you'd be surprised. Like I do, I basically walk a 5k every morning. So, mm -hmm. or try to every day. Uh, been doing them in the morning. I mean, but you know, I'm doing it in about an hour, and that's three. That's about point. right because you can walk a mile in about 20 minutes. So three yeah, miles, three point an hour. three some. Uh, what what three point one four is a is a five three point one one. Three point one one. So yeah. uh, you know, so I'm doing. I think my trail and everything. I think uh, like three point two seven. You know, I'm doing it in like just over an hour. And show you might you might as well you know get out there and run. I gotta get this belly off of me before I can run, man, because that's like a woman with big hooters, man. Just you know, it just, it just they don't make bras for bellies. I'm just saying. It you'd be surprised at some of these races what I've seen. So, but I'm down I'm down 55 pounds, so uh, hey, I'm definitely on the right track. Congratulations. I felt good about myself just being down one pound Sunday. There you go. But I've, I've got some goals to take care of because by August 16th, I need to have lost 15 pounds. 
Why? What's up on August 16th? Oh, I just want to be in better shape before my doctor's appointment. Okay. So you had, there is a reason why you picked that date. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Is this the official old man checkup? Yes. Gotcha. 10-4. Enough yeah. said. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get to it. Uh, first things first, I want to talk to you about... And and I had everything here. Why is it all gone? Nothing's where nothing's where I need it to be anymore. I mean, that's the way it goes in my life. But uh, yeah, let's talk about a one William Smith. Will Smith. Uh, okay. I, I got a couple things now because originally I wanted to talk to you about Bad Boys Four. Um, it is it is upon us, and the reviews are very good so far. Um, is it out? It. Uh, all I've heard from were reporters, so I don't believe it's officially out for us common folk yet. Okay. But, I see uh, the trailer, but yeah, the people in the know have have gotten to see it, and the reviews are glowing, we'll say. And my original question to you was: Has Hollywood publicly forgiven Will Smith and the public? And and that, that, the reason why I say and the public, because we're split down the middle there. There's Hollywood and there's the public. Now, before you answer that, though, for whatever reason, God was shining upon me. And I ran into this article on the old interweb today. Stephen A. Smith to stand down following backlash for comments on Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. Now, for those of you who don't know or may not be involved in the old sporting world. Stephen Smith is a talking head sports celebrity. He he interviews and hosts a lot of sports shows and everything. Um, before I read this to you, though, I want to make sure we're on the same page because you followed Stephen A. for a while, right? Oh, is yeah. it fair to say that Stephen A. has become more of a caricature of himself over the years? compared to the way he started out. Yeah, I would say he's definitely um got the big head. He's he's got the skip bayless head. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, here's what the article says. Stephen A is, Smith is standing down after receiving backlash for saying Will Smith needs to publicly apologize uh and address uh, excuse me, uh, publicly address the black community regarding him slapping Chris Rock in 2022. And uh, he was met with some uh, feedback from Will Smith supporters. And according to Stephen A., Will's actions directly affected uh, Will Packer, who produced the Oscars that year. And he was the first black producer to do so, by the way. He also believes Will's film Emancipation was possibly snubbed the following year due to his behavior. And he figured that uh, Antoine Fuqua, who directed the movie, could have won an Oscar. Not saying he would have, but it is possible, he argued. Um, and he says, because I know how much white America reveres Will Smith, and they're thinking along the lines of, in my mind, hell, if he did it, if he did it, what would the rest of us do? And that's what I was thinking when I said what I said Friday about being torn. Stephen A. then added that he never discouraged the public from supporting Will and acknowledged that the actor's life has been more good than bad. He also shared that he received countless messages from black fans of Will who wholeheartedly disagree with the notion that the actor owes the black community anything, dot, dot, dot. Where do you stand on that? Well, as a proud member of the black community, <laughs> um, I don't think. Okay, let's go back to the original question. Has Hollywood and the public forgiven Will Smith? Yes. There was nothing to forgive. That's where I am on it, because here's the thing. Yes, Will Smith apologized right after. My whole thing is. This is something between him and Chris Rock. He needs to get with Chris Rock. 
And, I mean, and regardless of all that, I mean, there's been plenty of celebrities that have done worse. Like, mm -hmm. has has the sporting world and the black community forgiven Tiger Woods for being a womanizer? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Nobody really gave a shit. You know, it was a thing because it happened on live television. Something that you didn't expect from Will Smith. Mm -hmm. It happened. We talked about it for a couple of weeks. And then something else happened and we kind of forgot about it. And you know I think what I mean? that's the thing. Will Smith had this good, wholesome image. So it kind of made everybody go a lot more than it would have. Yeah. Let's, I, let's I, say I a hip hop artist did it. Or we'll just throw a name out there. Diddy. Um, we just saw I mean, what Diddy we did. We would still be surprised because look at what Diddy's done now. Yeah. You know, we're still, you know, because nobody expected that from, you know, and if it was Suge Knight, it'd be different. But but here's my thing. You know, after Smith did what he did, people were like, oh, he doesn't need to be in any movies for a while. You know, this, that, and the other. I know everybody had their opinion, but oh, that, that whole thing, that conversation lasted for days, if not weeks, about Will Smith oh, yeah. and the Oscars. We done forgot about Diddy two days later. Right. And he on camera beat his woman and dragged right. her back to the hotel room. Right. But I'll put it like this, because I'm, I'm going to keep the, you know, so he smacked uh, Chris Rock. Right. So that's what basically assault and battery. Right. Mm -hmm. And so pe people are saying that they were saying that he should not be able to make movies anymore. Right. That was right. that was the going. So Rashid Rice committed assault and battery this year should he not be able to play football ever again I, i'm of the mind that yeah of course he should that uh, his, his job and it's what he does in the right. public are two different things same principle and that's how i feel with the will smith thing i don't think if there was ever anything to forgive like i don't us, think a lot any of less of will smith and if we and I, if we are fired from our jobs because of some of the things we do Man, half the population would be unemployed. For real. But, like, I don't think that he did anything that needs to be forgiven. I mean, he had a lapse of judgment. He got pissed off. Uh, we don't really know what all that, what all led up to that particular moment. I mean, now, it Stephen wasn't did just, say that. he said, I that mean, he it wasn't to... just the joke. I mean, it, it, him and Chris Rock could have been feuding for a while. I believe they were. And, and that's you know, one thing that Stephen A. said. He said, Will Smith needs to just publicly let everybody know what that whole beef was about. No, he doesn't. I don't think that he, do, he does need to do that because, again, that's between him and Chris. Thank you. We, it's none of our business. If, if, and Stephen A. Smith should take this according. If Shannon Sharp does not have to go into detail about his issues with Skip Bayless, Will Smith does not have to go into the, with his issues with Chris Rock. Because him and Shannon are boys. It's good That's for the it. goose. Got to be good for the gander. All right, y'all. Let us know what you think about this. Does Will Smith owe an apology? Should Will Smith con continue to get uh, further... Uh, whatever you want to call it, sanctions against the Academy or from the Academy? Or do you think this should all be water under the bridge like me and deal with Chris and let them hash it out? Let us know and in before, the comments. Go ahead, show. Before we move, before we move completely on from the subject, I want to go back and touch on, you had mentioned about his movie Emancipation. And mm -hmm. because of what happened the year before, could have hindered maybe the director getting an Oscar nomination for that movie fucking sucked. Did it? Let's I be honest. Seen it. I never seen. It. I mean, it was okay. I digress. I, I take that back. It didn't freaking suck. Okay, but it wasn't. It was a very boring movie, mm. done in all black and white. Mm -hmm. I do the remember acting that. was acting was great. Will Smith did a phenomenal job in the movie. But on a scale of one to ten, from everything that Will Smith has done, in my humble opinion, Emancipation was maybe a three, maybe a four. It didn't deserve an Oscar nomination. What he did about being the father of 
Venus and Serena Williams, King George, was was ten times better than what he did in this movie, Emancipation. All right. And the only reason Wait, did why I say he King did that, George, didn't, didn't I mean King Richard? King Richard, yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Wrong but, king, sorry. <laughs> one of them. Uh, but the only reason why he did that movie, and a lot of people don't know Emancipation, is because he turned down the role of Django. He was the original person that uh, really? Quentin Tarantino wanted as Django. But Django, or what Will Smith wanted it to be more about a love story between a black woman and a black man in the slavery times. Which Django was, but it's more of a revenge story. Mm -hmm. A rescue, like a damsel in distress type of story. Will Smith didn't want to play it that way, so Quentin Tarantino replaced him and hired Jamie Foxx. But Emancipation is exactly that. A slave in love with a woman trying to get back to his... That's what the whole movie is about, basically. And I, I so... I did not know that little tidbit. Yeah. There. And I will say this. Um, if I have to pick between actors, I do like Will Smith better than Jamie Foxx, but I can't imagine Django being played by anybody other than Jamie Foxx. Nope. Just my two cents. Um, so we'll just start with the course of the day. All right. How many people were you mean to today? How many, how many people did you say something, get snarky with, have an attitude? I, I said nobody. Nope. Nobody. Oh, look at you, man. Relative ray of sunshine. The reason why I ask that is because. As a society, we can be a lot nicer to one another. We really can. We've turned into a, and we've talked about this part on the show before, uh, a society of too happy um, people that want to cancel other people or throw them into litigation or just be outright assholes to one another for various reasons. It could be race, religion, um, politics. I mean, we've seen that and, you know, we're getting closer to the mudslinging rearing up uh, for this presidential election. And there will be, make no mistake about it. And it just feels like, you know, if we really want to, and I'm going to use the quote, make America great again, it doesn't start with who's elected to office. It starts with ourselves. Um, what are you going to do for your neighbor to make America great again? What are you going to do for your friends or family to make America great again? What are you going to do for yourself to make America great again? People are too selfish nowadays. They're not going to do anything for their neighbor. It's all about me, 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 me. That's what society has turned into. What do you think it'd take to get society out of that mind frame? A cataclysmic disaster that wipes out mankind and God hits the reboot, reboot button. Okay, God, if you're listening, take me first because I don't know. This is a, this is a, we are living in a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm hmm. You know, where where sin is, uh, especially sins of the flesh, are promoted, idolized, encouraged. Um, it would actually take, it would take all the white people in the country to believe that they are that they had a extended responsibility for racism in this country. Mm -hmm. It would take every black person in America to have a sense of forgiveness for said offense and then take both sides to come together and work together in a uni unified way. But that will never, ever happen. People don't want to learn new things people don't want to have an open mind and listen to somebody else's 
uh, opinion, you know, uh, in, in my humble opinion, the older I get, the the less I talk. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't think so on the show because obviously we talk every week, but you know, I'm, I'm always open to listening to other people's point of views and, um, generally going, okay, well, you know, I didn't think about it that way. Yeah. And that, that, that's, hits the nail on the head. If we're willing to just listen to the other person, I'm not saying you have to agree, but mm -mm. nine times out of 10, if you just listen, you might see something from a different perspective, whether you still agree or you, I mean, you still feel the same way, but at least you'll know where the other person's coming from. It goes back to that stubbornness that you pointed out. Too, too many people are too stubborn. I don't care what he says. I don't care what she thinks. This is the way I see it. And, you know, we're so eager to get our point out. We're so eager to have everybody see what we see. And we don't realize it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Like, you know, there's an old uh, martial arts um, little like storyline when a teacher's teaching to a student. You know, this particular student went to the best uh, Japanese uh, swordsman and wanted to learn how to, you know, uh, use the katana. So, you know, the, the master starts showing him different things and the student would be like, well, no, you should do it. You know, my other instructor used to do it like this. And, you know, the 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 master would move on, you know, and the student would be like, well, we learned it this way type of thing, you know. And eventually he said, well, you know what? Let's take a break. Let's go have some tea. And so they sat down. The master got the two cups and the tea. And he started pouring the tea into the student's cup. And he kept pouring and getting fuller and fuller. And eventually it started overflowing. And the master just kept kept filling it up. And the master's like, cup or master, you know, my, my cup's overflowing. You can't put any more information. He said, that's exactly how you are. You need to empty your cup so you can get more information that I can teach you how to do, you know, X, Y, Z. That's what we have to do in America. We have to empty our cups. Hmm. Like that. I, I can't even add anything else to that. Look at that wisdom from Big Show. Happens twice a year. Glad it happens on the show. Yeah, don't expect it next week, kids. <laughs> uh, I am going to tap you for a little bit more wisdom right now because um, I promised before we get out of here, we were going to talk about the Acolyte. And we had not one but two episodes drop last week. And for those of you who don't know, we record on a Tuesday. So later on tonight, episode three drops. And for all six or eight, however many episodes there are of this thing, we're going to, you know, continually give our thoughts on it and i guess my first thought or my first question to big show is are you prepared for eight episodes are you willing to see this through what are your thoughts on it uh so far i'm letting you go first um so far i am okay right in the middle of where we're at Obviously, they're laying the foundation. It's what all they do. Um, now, if you're still watching and you haven't seen this, these two first two episodes, you should probably just hit stop here because I'm about to throw out some, uh, well, they call them spoilers. Mm -hmm. So first off, I want to tell you, I was actually very intrigued by the fact that the chick that played the first Jedi, you know, Trinity from Matrix. Mm hmm she didn't last but the first two or three minutes of the show. I'm like, because she was the only one that they basically showed throughout all the trailers. Mm -hmm. So you really thought going in, she was going to play a big part. Right. So I was actually, I was actually, oh, that's, that's, that's kind of cool how they did that. Um, you know, I, I'm more anxious to see how tonight's episode go. Cause I think we're going to learn more about whoever the acolytes actually working for. Mm -hmm. Or learning from. I think we're going to learn a little bit more of that nature. But my real hope um, in the entire series is that we see Yoda. We have to see Yoda. Have to. I would agree. I mean, at this stage, he's already a Jedi Master. Yeah, he is 700-something years old at this time. Because this was 100 years before. 100 years before the Phantom Menace. Right. So 
you know, I think what he was like 900 years when he died or something yes. like that. So he's a couple hundred years younger. So he's should definitely be a big factor in the Jedi council. Um, so I hope to see, uh, him eventually, even if it's just a passing by glimpse or something, him in the background, I think they should definitely, uh, just kind of tie everything in. That would be smart. I mean, unfortunately, I think that would be the most Disney thing to do is to not put Yoda in there because I've right. seen the way that Disney's handled legacy characters. It ain't been good. No. Just like you, I'm right down the middle on this show. There are things that intrigue me, but there are head scratches too. And I'll get into more of the head scratchers in a minute. But um, I do like the way this thing is gone. And, and just like you, I expected Carrie Ann Moss to last a couple of episodes that didn't go our way. But at the same time, I was like, well, didn't see that coming. You know, Anytime that uh, I can watch a show or a movie and they throw me a curveball, I like that. Because if I yes. expect it and it happens, it's like, eh, yeah, cookie cutter. Um, so that was cool. The main guy, the main character, Jedi Master Saul, mm -hmm. I'm liking this dude. He reminds me of Qui-Gon Jinn. He, he's very knowledgeable. He's very even keel. And he seems like in a lightsaber fight, he would be a badass. And I'm glad you brought that up. The one thing that annoyed me, mm -hmm. now I enjoyed it being a martial artist, the hand-to-hand -hand combat stuff between Carrie Ann Moss and the the assassin and then, uh, you know, this head or Jedi. But what, what bothers me the most is Jedis didn't do hand-to-hand -hand combat. Any movie that you ever watched, you didn't see Obi Wan Kenobi throwing punches. Now you didn't he see threw, he threw a little hand to hand in the Obi Wan show, but it was very little. That's different. I'm talking about in the movies mm, when yeah. you originally were introduced to what Jedi's were. Mm -hmm. They didn't do hand to hand combat. And if I'm a Jedi and I have the power of the Force, where I can stop you from moving, why would I ever throw hands? <laughs> I would just. Oof, stop you. You just can't move. You, you forever frozen. I'm walking to you, pimp smack you. <laughs> Put my Jedi lightsaber underneath your chin, turn it on, turn it off, and we're done. I didn't I don't like that part because Jedi's don't normally do hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now I do know maybe in the older times, maybe they did, the different fighting styles. I don't know. You just haven't seen it yeah. in live action. Um, one character that I'm not too uh, high on. What is his name? Yor, Yar, something like that. Yor, the black guy with the crazy hairdo. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I'm wondering is he more comic relief? It, what what the deal is with him? Yeah, he has a his his role besides knowing the girl because mm -hmm. uh, they went through Jedi training together, I guess. Yeah. Um, he's a forgettable character. Cause I wasn't even thinking about him until you brought him up. See, I mean, you know, even, uh, X 23, uh, it was more of a memorable commit character. And, and, and I'm, I'm talking about the, uh, Jedi master souls apprentice. Uh, I mm -hmm. forget her name uh, on the actual show. I call her X-23 because it's the uh, same young girl that uh, played Wolverine's daughter in Logan. Yes, so, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, you know, she's more believable as a Padawan than that dude is as a Jedi Knight, so. That's just me. I know, um, you. I agree. I totally agree. That's just us. <laughs> I have heard reports from people that are upset with the show because they believe Disney continues to push their woke agenda. I caught one reference during the show that I could possibly agree with, but I haven't seen it anywhere else in the show. And it's, it's, it's brief and you miss it. 
and it could be looked at as one way or the other, woke or not woke, just happened to be. And I know the director uh, is part of the LGB, I don't know, the alphabet community. And she did say that she wants to put her stamp on it so it will be personal. So, you know, her life is in it. I get that. Um, and, and the reference that I'm uh, talking about is, I don't remember who it was that was telling the, the, the main girl in the show, hey, we tried to save the rest of your family. We couldn't save your mothers or your sister. I do recall now, that, yes. In the script, they could have said your family, your parents, but they went out of their way to say your mothers or your sister. That one caught me. But, you know, because it went by so fast, I'm saying to myself, okay, they wrote it that way. They wrote it that way. As long as they're not throwing anything in our faces in this show, I'm not going to look at it with a woke agenda. Yeah, they kind of threw that in like a jab at a fight. <laughs> You know, yes, you just kind of hit and you just take it and keep pushing. But now I didn't really, I didn't really think nothing of it. Exactly. You know, I just, you know, I didn't, I didn't look at it one way or the other, but you're right. I mean, when you boil it down to it, yeah, it's now one, one more thing that they I put like, it in there. Both. Well, I say both girls played by the same girl, but neither one of them can just come out and just whoop anybody's ass. I'm looking at you, Ray. And, and that's one thing they got right. I mean, in order to beat Carrie Ann Moss, she had to trick her. True, but she also, yes, yes, you are absolutely right. But the difference between Ray and this young lady is Ray is the blood of the emperor. True. You know, it's kind of like how Luke was so good. He was the blood of Anakin. You know, so I think that favored that favors Ray with why she's able to do what she did. Now, not necessarily agree that she should be that powerful, but you know, if you rank, she's pretty powerful in the force wielding world of Jedi or star Wars or order. Not as powerful as Anakin, but that's, Oh no. Anakin is one of the top. No, Dave Filoni has already said, and I hope this happens on uh, Ahsoka season two. I don't know if you ever saw, uh, I think it was either Rebels or it was Clone Wars. They had the Mortis gods, the father, the daughter, and the son. And the father can control the light side as well as the dark side. He embellishes both. And he even said to Anakin, one day you will take my place. And they are pushing that. And if it goes in that direction in season two, Anakin will be no undisputed if he becomes the next mortis god that's just the way they're going now if you're looking if you look it up and the way they rank the force wielders he's one of the top like he's top two or three mm -hmm. but he wasn't stronger than yoda no no and he wasn't more powerful than yoda in the force no i agree with that he had the because potential. yoda's whole point was yoda was so powerful that he punished himself by go by by since he lost his battle with uh, Palpatine or the Emperor mm -hmm. in Revenge of the Sith, and could not stop uh, the destruction of the Jedi. He punished himself on the Dagobah planet, which was a Sith world, and used his Force to stay hidden. That's how powerful he was with all that negative Force energy. On that on that planet, he did that to himself and, and remained anonymous. I mean, Anakin or uh, Darth Vader never sensed Yoda when he was talking to Luke. Yeah, that's true. I mean, even a lot of people don't even remember this, but even in the movies when he's talking to Luke, his words were "Obi Wan has taught you well." He had no yes. idea. That no idea. Yeah. I look forward to this episode three for a couple different reasons. Obviously, to advance the story. And from what I've heard, because the powers that be got to see the first four episodes, 
And I've heard episode three stands out out of those first four. So I am expecting to, you know how we're on the, on the fence. I'm expected to be over the fence and on that green side of the grass. Now I don't want to be in the dirt. I want to be in the grass. So, um, you guys, if you stick with us next week, you're going to find out, you know, whether I got grass stains on my pants or dirt. <laughs> so do we know? So if I'm not mistaken, the chick is the alkalite, right? Yes, she is. The the assassin, the mm -hmm. sister. Because an acolyte and... is uh, someone who's learning the dark side. You're not a Sith until you pass those trials. So, but we don't know who the Sith is no, in not this yet. particular show. No. Wouldn't so it be it, awesome if it was like Plagueis? Yeah, I survived. Yeah. No, what, what do you mean you survived? Palpatine oh, yeah. ain't around yet. That's right. Because Palpatine, Palpatine wouldn't even be born yet. Right. Ooh, ooh I like and Plagueis. And Plagueis was uh, the Sith that took on Palpatine. Palpatine mm -hmm. killed Plagueis to become the head Sith. So I'm curious. Because Plagueis was an alien, so I don't know how old, you know, he actually was. I don't know if that's the case. I mean, the helmet kind of makes me think it's Raven. Like, reminds me of Darth Raven. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if they're... I, I, think I, I think that might be just a coincidence. Yeah, I think that's the Old Republic, though, if you go back towards him. They're still in the old, they're in the well, old Republic I mean, right now. Really old. Like, I'm talking like four or 500 years, but. It depends. It depends how the new Disney wants to spin it. That is also true. One more thing that I liked. I know it's supposed to be a murder mystery show, but they didn't drag out. Did she kill him? Did she not? They established right. early on. Hey, twin sister. She did it. So that's out of the way. So that was the other thing that made me say, okay, didn't see that coming. They gave it away immediately. So Because at first these, I thought maybe she was force possessed or something of that nature. Yeah, because she woke up from a bad dream, didn't she? Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of what I thought at first. The hokey character, and he better get better, is that flipping Wookiee Jedi. I didn't like the way season two or episode two ended with him just because you would think a Jedi, even a Wookiee, he would be more under control instead of just some. Well, he didn't rip their he didn't rip their arms off. He didn't get to them yet. Well, from what he I just kind of scared he's, them away. He's uh, I don't want to say in hiding. What is that? Uh, he he's just closed himself off from everybody because of what happened. Yeah, because I think what the, she's after. She's after the original the four. Yeah. The Wookiee. She's soul. after the Asian guy, and she killed two of the four. She killed two of the four. Now, well, what I want to know she killed is, one and talked the other one into committing suicide. Yeah, he went out like a punk, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, but I guess I need to see what was so bad that he felt that kind of grief. That's what I want. Yes. To because, you know, for yes. her to want revenge, it's one thing if somebody says they can't get to you, they can't save you, but you find a way out yourself. What's going to make you go down that path of revenge against them for not helping you? That's what I want to see. And why is this Sith person so intrigued about that particular incident that he's kind of force feeding the girl into killing those people? I believe that he's using her quest for vengeance to groom an apprentice to help him with his further agenda. No, I, I, I think you're probably right, but, but let's go back to like everything that we've seen before. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just use Anakin as an example. Um, Palpatine or the emperor used uh, his feelings towards Padme after the fact, you mm -hmm. know, you killed her. It was your fault. And and Pad and he's like, no, when I stopped choking her, she was still alive. I felt it. No, you killed her type of thing. So he used that against him. But go back to when Anakin saved his mom. 
you know, Palpatine didn't push that agenda to go get revenge because they kidnapped your mom type of thing. So, and he was grooming him even back then. We just didn't realize he was the emperor. I mean, we did, but, you know, they didn't I think, know. I think Palpatine had it on a sneaky level. He didn't know Anakin had it in him until he confided with him and said, I killed Zan people. And he used that when he fought Dooku in the next movie. And he had him, uh, uh, he had him, you know, ready to surrender. And he's sitting there on his throne, like, do it, kill him, do it. Yep. So he, he, he had him in his back pocket. And I think he even I just, said, remember I'm, the sand people. I'm thinking, yeah, I think you're right now that you say that. Uh, but I'm thinking that this Sith character had something to do with whatever's happening. Ooh. Like Ooh. he had, I, I like I, that theory. It seems too too generic just for her to be groomed to get revenge to be mm -hmm. whatever she is you know i i don't see her being ventress because well ventress is clone war so she wouldn't be that old yeah you know or some like of that nature um no this is somebody brand new that we've never seen before on screen that's for sure could be somebody well, I'm from one to, of the books. I'm trying to think about books, you know, yeah. all the books that I've read. I'm trying to think of, but, you know, there was no book called The Acolyte. So there really wasn't any of these characters that. Now, I've uh, heard this theory. Introduced. You remember the guy in the shop that supplies her? Yes. I the, that yes. This is a theory that he is actually the dark side user. And she doesn't know it. Now, I, I don't believe that. He doesn't seem manipulative enough. He, he doesn't seem like that type. But if that happens, they've got me fooled. Yeah, I'd agree. But I think the other Jedi would have sensed it. Nobody sensed Palpatine. He was the most powerful Sith wielder, though. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. you know it's like that's like saying you know somebody you know a white belt saying he could be just as good as bruce lee you know in a fight you know, no no you can't you know so it's like potatoes and tomatoes to me it, they, they're not the same thing very true i mean palpatine was so powerful that he had the veil over the jedi for decades yes he did know. sitting right under their noses talking to him every right day. yeah so i don't i mean i would i would think because the jedi were so powerful at this time that the that they somebody you know that it would have been you know i feel a disturbance or something you know uh where if you go back to when you know, the time of the Clone Wars and, and all that, they kept saying there's a cloud. I just can't see through the fog type of thing. You know, yes. there's something kind of hiding what I'm not that there was an evil there. It's just I can't really see you're not getting that from. I don't get that vibe from from it. So that is true. I think if they do do that, it would be kind of hokey. Yeah, I think if they do that, because that would undo everything about Palpatine being yeah. the way he is. Now you're yeah. saying there was somebody that was better than him. Yeah. And you now, can't you can't go back and rewrite the the saga, you know, the, the Skywalker saga is what I'll call it. You can't go back and rewrite it. No. That would that would turn the fans away quick, fast, and in a hurry. And we already, just like black on black crime, we got Star Wars fan on Star Wars fan crime. I mean, you've got... Right? It, it's very cut and dry. You either get people that love it or hate it. And I'm just talking about the fans themselves, not the people that don't care for Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Um, I just we... wish that they would actually... It's kind of like what I say about DC. I wish they would pick a storyline, see it through. Yes. Which you do have a better shot at this, seeing it through, than DC. Well, I do also like the fact that they're going back in time. Because you can pretty much rewrite your own story as mm -hmm. long as it doesn't conflict with the future. 
exactly storyline these are brand new characters do what you will don't mess anything up that we've already written in a time that we always wondered what it was like but haven't seen and now we're right now we're getting to see it speaking of seeing before we shut it down i know you mentioned the yoda thing Mm -hmm. now just in this episode three that comes out tonight slash tomorrow what's the one thing that you would like to see in episode three I would like to see just a little bit more backstory or storyline of the mystery Sith. I want to know what I I want to know what his or her uh, actual involvement with this young girl is. Why? Because she was never part of the Jedi. Uh, training the the other sister was, yes, because they thought she was dead, mm -hmm. obviously, and she thought her own so, sister was dead, right? So, what about this assassin got her involved with the dark force yield wielder? You know, um, I would like to see how that relationship connected. I agree. Um, one thing that I want to see, um, besides that, of course, I want to see the universe really expand. I, I, I do feel like it's Star Wars, but I also feel like it's a TV show. Open it up a little bit. We were on Bloody Coruscant last week, and it just didn't feel like we were in a big city. It felt like we were on a TV set. I, I want it to be more open. You know, don't just confine us to a little box. Um, get the journey started and give me flashbacks. That would be a great way to see what happened. Flashbacks. Don't just tell the story. And knock on wood, make Carrie Ann Moss earn that paycheck. If you bring her back with flashbacks, then she earns the right to be on all those movie posters and everything because she's in it more than one episode. And the guy yeah, that killed and himself I, with the weird beard, um, he should be part of those flashbacks too. And didn't he have like a screwed up eye as well? Yes, he did. So I'm curious. Yeah, I bet you they will do flashbacks to see how, why are they responsible for the fire? Because that's basically how the family died, right? Mm -hmm. quote unquote was the house burned down they couldn't get him out yeah it, it's going to be interesting tell us what you guys think about this as well leave us uh, your comments at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com or you can comment on the podcast feeds or on YouTube doesn't matter I look at them all yes love to hear from you big show you have anything before we get out of here mm. Nope. Well said. Um, I don't have any nothing that we haven't already said. You know, take us on out of here then. Hey, thank you for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you know when we're throwing stuff on the old tube of views. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. And uh, tell somebody you love them, hug them. Tomorrow's not promised. Amen. Good night, everybody. <laughs>